Welcome back to the MUSB Dugout. I'm Scott Hall, and today I'm joined by a member of the class of 2007 and current head coach of the Abilene Christian Wildcats softball program, Abigail Farler, better known to Marshall fans as Abigail Harder. Abby, how are you doing? Great. Thank you for having me. Well, and actually, can I call you Abby? Should I call you Coach Farler? You can call me. If somebody calls me Abby, you know that it's from Marshall, honestly. <laughs> but nobody else gets, gets to call me that, so go okay. for it. <laughs> okay, I'll, I, I guess I can get away with that then. Yeah. Um, all right, well, you know, how, how is your team doing right now with all of the COVID restrictions that are going on this fall? We have been blessed with a really smooth fall uh, as far as COVID. We just finished up our 20-hour weeks, and we were able to get through it with all of our practices. Um, you know, we had to make some modifications and adjust, but overall, we feel really great. We did uh, a lot of inner squads. We couldn't scrimmage anyone outside, but we got a lot of work in. Well, well that, that's good that you were able to get through everything because you keep hearing in so many different places, you know, this team gets quarantined for two weeks, you know, and this team out and all that sort of stuff. Football teams are obviously having to cancel games, postpone games. So yeah, that was great, so especially since this is only your, you know, your second season really there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, this was huge for us this fall. Like just being able to get out there and really start implementing things that we've been working on. We feel grateful that it was smooth. All right, well, we'll get to your numerous coaching success here in just a bit. But, you know, first, let's go back to your youth in, in Monmouth, Oregon. Now, was softball always the sport that you were into? Uh, did you play any other sports when you were younger? Yeah, I played all the sports. Honestly, I when I was younger, I really liked soccer probably the most. Um, I also played basketball. My dad was big on basketball. And really with basketball, I was good for was fouling out of games and <laughs> throwing some elbows, but um, soccer was my favorite. And the coaches, all the co kind of coaches in the community came to me and were like, look, you're going to be six foot. You're left-handed. You are not fast. You need to pitch. Soccer's not your thing. <laughs> so kind of. Uh, what position did you play in soccer? What's that? What, what position did you play in soccer? I was a forward. Okay. I was okay. I mean, I had a hat trick in high school. I wasn't terrible, but. I wasn't going to play college soccer, so. Okay. Well, when, when did you start thinking, though, about playing um, softball in college? Um, probably middle school would have been a time when I, it got more serious and starting to do um, consistent lessons and practicing softball year-round um, around mm -hmm. basketball and so soccer, so. Were, were there any schools that you dreamed of going to, or were you just kind of open to wherever you can go? I really wanted to go to school in Arizona because my sister live, she still lives in Arizona. And so I thought that would be really cool. And I remember going down in high school and checking out all of the schools, um, going down to University of Arizona, checking out the community colleges. And I just wanted to be out in the sun and play softball in Arizona. Um, Oregon State probably was a big one for me um, in high school, just because I went to school 15 minutes away from Oregon State. But um, I think I really wanted an adventure and I was really excited to just go, go do something out on my own. And so that's why Marshall ended up being kind of the perfect fit. Who was the first Marshall coach that talked to you? Um, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is good that you're editing this. Um, <laughs> what is her name? She was a pitching coach only for a year and, uh, you know Bess. Yeah. Coach Bess. Coach Bess. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so the whole, even the recruiting story was just kind of freak of nature because it, her dad was the one that was at a game that I was pitching in, in Las Vegas, I think, or in LA. Okay. It must've been LA. And so her dad was there and I left a pitch over the middle of the plate and got blasted so hard that the ball hit me in my right shoulder and went into the dugout. I mean, I got lit up. But <laughs> she told me later on, that's why her dad came and talked to her about me because I was so mad. I was like, give me the ball back. And I just kept pitching. And I had this massive knot. <clears throat> and that was what tipped him off that I could be a competitor in college, I guess. So. Well, I, well good thing you were a lefty if it's going to smack you in the right arm there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. 
Um, okay, well, how was your adjustment period when you made the move out here to Marshall, well over you know, about 2,500 miles from your hometown, mixing in with your new coaches and your new teammates? Um, the adjustment, I remember being homesick and having it be challenging, but having it be just like so busy and we were a family and that was it was just huge that we did everything as a softball team. I remember being really welcomed in when we did freshman move in. My dad and I missed the flight to go to West Virginia for move in. And so we missed all of our planes, ended up getting there really late. And the twins dad, um, without question, just said, oh, we'll pick you up from the airport. He drove up to Charleston, picked us up from the airport. And I think that was just a really telling way to start the whole experience because it was just going to be a family and we just picked each other up and, um, I, I, that, that's like one of the most clear memories for me. And I think I, I came in in a class right behind that really um, big class with uh, the twins and CK and Spina and Lee and um, all of these really good, big personality athletes, you know, like they just kind of pulled you in and you were going along with them, whether you liked it or not. <laughs> <laughs> No, they, they, yeah, they were definitely good about that. Um, yeah. you know, we'll talk about your freshman season, though. You know, Marshall was picked to finish first, but then unfortunately, you know, things really didn't work out that way, and you know, a team ends up missing the MAC tournament. I mean, how how was that going through your freshman year? Gosh, I think it's like the whole thing as a freshman was just a whirl. Like you kind of feel like you're keeping your nose above water, or I did just throw and figure out how to be a college athlete. And um, yeah, I'm sure that that sophomore class remembers that a whole lot more because, you know, I just, I didn't want to screw it up. Like, <laughs> I think probably more of my mentality was just do what I need to do for the team. And um, yeah, not the most successful that we had there. Well, I, that sophomore class was definitely pretty upset with the way things finished there. Um, but yeah. Going along with that, then how focused was the team going into 2005, especially since it was going to be the last year in the MAC? Yeah, I think um, Randy was a big part of that because she that was her senior year, and Randy was so like uh, just get on my back and were she wanted to carry us, and she was going to lead by work ethic, and um, there was just no other option but to grind and figure it out and compete, and um, I think that was a, a big part of that year that I remember. And what a cool experience to get to be two years behind Randy and learn from her. Um, really honestly being clueless coming into college about how difficult things were going to be, and what really what the expectation was going to be. And then getting to learn from her and grow was, was cool that second year. Well, and the team definitely had some success that year. I had 38 wins. You had 14 of them. Uh, you know, 20 and four in conference, the number one seed. And then unfortunately things kind of end in heartbreak again, you get to the championship game and it's just, just couldn't quite, just couldn't mm -hmm. quite get there. I mean, uh, just get, see if you can describe that, that unfortunate, that heartbreak there at the end of the year. Oh my gosh. Honestly, <laughs> that's probably one of the most clear losses that I have in my because I, I really carry so much weight from that one pitching. I did not come out strong. I remember uh, the coaches trusting me at the end there and saying they felt like I was a good fit and that this was a good matchup. And my focus was not there. Just, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> hopefully you can edit this out. But it was like, I remember so clearly. And it was like, Randy was the one that was most prepared and really like, guilt for me on that one because it was like man that's her senior year and I didn't I blew it like I didn't have the focus and the attention to detail that she had at that moment you know and it mattered I think it really realistically mattered more because she knew it was the end for her that it didn't carry as much weight for me until later on well but I mean that's still a pretty good learning experience yeah. you know I mean un unfortunately the way it happened but still for you to take that with you through the rest of your career and then even now as a coach as you say just being prepared the detail oriented and all that I mean yeah kind of rough you had to go through it but still a pretty good learning lesson oh yeah gosh you learn so much more by failure I do I really do believe that you learn more by failure than through success and those things really sting 
Um, but then I think it helps you articulate what you want because you know the opposite side of that and how bad that hurts and you want to help, help other people avoid that. Um, now in 2006, a whole new conference, Conference USA, um, no more traveling north to <laughs> cold schools or anything like that. Every, everything is either south or southwest, anything. You know, what, what was that like? Just a complete switch on all opponents that you were used to. Yeah, I remember that being so exciting. It felt a little bit um, bigger and uh, more grand, I guess. Like the trips that we were taking, it was like so cool getting to experience these totally new places. I feel like I got the best of everything with my four years at Marshall because we got to do the Mac. We also got to do CUSA. I got to travel to so many different schools and have so many memories, but um, I thought that was a, a really fun transition my junior year because that senior class was so hungry and they were so driven. They had a very, very clear vision of what they were wanting. Um, they're great leaders. Well, and then, you know, I hate to bring this up again, but you know, another trip to the conference championship. Now, what was that like for you to see the emotions from that senior class when it was another championship loss? I mean, everything that that class had gone through and just couldn't quite get over the hump. Yeah, I, those girls, like their, their drive and competitiveness, it was, it was a major letdown because you realize like, well, this, this is it. And it goes by so fast. And, um, and then all of a sudden it's just done. It's, it's crazy. And I mean, if you, when you talk to the Jess and Amanda, they're going to remember every pitch of that game. <laughs> they remember every detail. Um, and well, I've got them in a few days. I'm talking to yeah. them on Monday. So <laughs> I can't wait to hear. They're going to remember literally every detail. <laughs> I might have to avoid those games. I don't know. I don't oh know. yeah. You'll fire Jess and Amanda up. <laughs> Yeah, probably. <laughs> okay, let's move on a little bit then. Uh, so talk about your senior season, you know, new pitching coach. It's your, it's your third pitching coach during your time there. And, you know, Marshall, again, a bit of an up and down year, but still making it to the conference tournament. Yeah, it, it was really interesting. And that's one of the big um, highlights or um, most telling things from the experience at Marshall was there were three different pitching coaches and that year was really awkward. It was, I had a really tough time losing our pitching coach my senior year. Honestly, I went into a victim mentality where it was like, seriously, my senior year, why me? And I remember going into the locker room and I was mad when we found out um, that Coach Merb was going to another school. Um, and I remember the girls calling me out and they were like, it's not about you she needs to do what makes the most sense for her. So you've got to figure it out. Like, and realistically at that point, I'm 22. I should be able to figure this out. <laughs> I've got enough experience, but what a blessing um, to turn around um, and get a totally different pitching coach with a really different perspective and style. And I learned so much in that one season from him that um, coach Clopton, I, I really took the probably the most away that I teach technically to pitchers now. And so then you remove yourself, you know, 10 or 15 years and you're like, wow, that was a huge blessing to get three different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And anyhow, but that was a tough year. It was, I mean, it was just tough with a ton of transition going into that year, but I think it was really good for all of us post school to figure out how to adjust and make the most of our situations. Okay. Well, your college career comes to an end, but, how was it pitching in the Netherlands? That was a, a really, really fun experience. Uh, Randy was the one who helped me get connected to that because she had gone before me. Um, and it was, it was so cool to get to go travel around Europe and make, make friends that I'm still friends with in the Netherlands. And um, it was definitely different than I was expecting. Um, it was cool to get to uh, teach some, some of the women over there and then compete. I got to hit again. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just a really, it was really uh, interesting and, and a once in a lifetime opportunity. Really good people out there, fun, fun girls. Good, now, okay, so you've obviously gotten into coaching. Was coaching something you always wanted to get into or did that kind of develop while you were in school? 
never, I never thought I was going to coach. Honestly, I coached uh, some little kids when I was at Marshall. I remember doing some little pitching lessons. Um, actually, there's a, a little girl named Allison Chapman, and she was my little sis. And I used to call her Big Al, and I would work with her every once in a while because she was a lefty, and it was a lot of fun. And she ended up playing in college. It was like so cool to get to watch that. But um, that was my first coaching experience. And then when I moved to Arizona after playing in the Netherlands, I thought I want to help the little kids. Like that's fun. I want to help them build a foundation. And it just kind of grew from there. Helping at high school. Um, yeah, that was definitely not a dream or a vision. I never would have guessed in college that I'd be a college softball coach, you know. Well, when did you start to think about trying to get up to the college level and start coaching there? Um, when, after uh, Matt and I got married, we moved to Colorado. We wanted to try something on our own and just have a, a totally fresh start for us, you know, to build a marriage. And so random, I was just working a job in a financial institute. And I was like, you know what, it might be fun to call kind of call, coach college softball that's not how it works like this is crazy I just emailed the coach at Colorado School of Mines and I was like hey I noticed you don't have a pitching coach on your website do you want one I can help and she uh had me come out interviewed me and hired me on the spot and we had an awesomely successful year it was so much fun to coach with her she was a young coach um I got to learn a lot and had a really successful all-american pitcher that there wasn't a whole lot to teach her just like kind of feed into her. And then it just kept going from there. It's been a really wild ride. By the way, I, I love their logo. I looked at that, you know, the other day and, you know, the donkey with the mining equipment on its back and you know, a stick of dynamite in its mouth. I just, I, I love that. I thought that was absolutely great mascot for them. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So you, you know, you had a great experience. Now you were only there for one season, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yep. uh, next, you make a quick move back to your hometown, you know, Western Oregon, still in Division Two, but more success again. I mean, how, how was this, you know, still, again, building and learning and just developing even more into your coaching system? What a cool opportunity. That, again, was just, like, so, so crazy. My parents had said, oh, you should look at Western Oregon. I grew up three blocks from that school. My parents graduated from there and I emailed the coach and said, Hey, I noticed you don't have a pitching coach on your website. That is not how college coaching works. <laughs> I mean, if I got that email right now, I would ignore it. Um, and so, yeah, I, I reached out, uh, put my name in. They, it turns out that they were actually looking for a pitching coach and I applied, interviewed, um, was hired and we moved. We, you know, initially we wanted to move to Oregon because we thought we wanted to start a family. And so, it would be cool to explore being a full-time softball coach. And it was just the perfect fit. I was able to learn a lot um, coaching under Lonnie and um, three years of a lot of success there. Some really good pitchers too. So, Well, and, and you got to go to regionals as well. Mm -hmm. so you're, getting, you're getting that postseason experience, you know, and all that. I mean, I mean, that had to have been fantastic. Oh, it was so much fun. Uh, my first year there, we had some really competitive, driven, just really fun kids to coach. And it was like, that was my first time as a full-time softball coach and getting to um, be involved in all the areas of the game and learn a lot. And, oh gosh, I just learned so much. Those kids, were awesome. it was a really fun first experience with being, being there every day in the grind. Well, okay, so now you make another step. Now you become a head coach. You move to Corbin University, it's the NAIA level, but still, it's it's your program. And so, how how was that when you first stepped into that? You went from being, you know, hey, notice you don't have a pitching coach, to now yeah. it, you are the one in the main office. That's that was crazy too. I had met the athletic director from Corbin at a basketball game at Western Oregon, and just happened to start a conversation and pretty extroverted. I like to talk to people. <laughs> uh, it turns out they were going to end up looking for a new coach at the um, end of that season. And uh, we talked and I, I really never wanted to be a head coach. Scott, like, honestly, I had always said I would never be a head coach. That seems awful. I like the relationships. I like being the fun coach that gets to build relationships with the kids and does the fun stuff. And uh, I had a very clear vision for what I would want in a program. And so when, when I interviewed there, it was the most like relaxed and peaceful interview because I was able to say, 
this is what I would do. This is why I don't know. And if you like that, okay. And I didn't have to move. It was just right there still. Same, same distance basically from Western Oregon to where we were living. And um, what a sense of peace to be hired in uh, with an athletic director that just totally believed in the vision. And then when I got there and saw the kids, I was like, dang, there's some good athletes here. But they were really, really good. Well, and then you obviously clearly had a lot of success there with the Warriors. I mean, a record of 120 and 44 is just is just astounding there. And, you know, trips to the NAIA World Series, you know, and I, and I see you brought some of Coach Stanton's aggressiveness on the bases there, the 100, oh, yeah. 134 stolen bases your last year there in 2019. But, I mean, so, so how was that, just running through those few years there and just racking up wins? Oh, my gosh. It was uh, just a wild ride and so much fun because the kids trusted it. They trusted the vision for how I wanted to run the program. Um, and it took so much from Coach Stanton, honestly. Like, there could be a copyright on <laughs> like, should give giving a lot of credit to a lot of the uh, positive stats there. But um, a lot of it was the mentality and the team chemistry and the culture that I really relied on. And then a mentality where we were just going to take risks and we were going to have fun playing ball. Um, and I just wanted the girls to be confident and, um, you know, it was my first head coaching experience. And so I, I really don't, I still don't know everything. And so it was a lot of collaboration with players. I've never played shortstop. Um, so <laughs> let's talk through this. Let's talk through your coverage. Let's talk through your first step here. Here's what I'm seeing. What are you feeling? And it worked. It really worked well with those kids because they, they were respectful and they were willing to listen and learn and collaborate and just such a cool experience to be able to grow over those three years there. Well, so now you make another move, your latest one. Now you jump back up to the Division One level where you got to play, and you make a move down into Texas, Abilene Christian University. Now, I know your first season was unfortunately cut short, just like everybody else's was last year, but, you know, how, how has this move been for you so far? Absolutely incredible. I'm just uh, super grateful. This is it's really the dream school for me. The culture of the university, the vision of the athletic department is just completely in line with how I want to run a softball program. So to have administrative support is just, it makes it a really fun experience. Um, it's been a really cool transition. I mean, our facilities here are incredible. It's Texas and softball in Texas. Come on, it doesn't get any better. I mean, like there's just so much good uh, talent here and um, Texas loves sports, and so we feel really well supported. And I have full-time assistant coaches now. I mean, it's incredible. I got to hire some really, really bright people that believe in what we're doing here, and they specifically want this environment too. It's I feel so grateful and blessed to be here. Well, and, and that's obviously got to be good to be able to have that full-time staff. And like you said, you get to sit down and hire them so you know what you are bringing in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's incredible. I, uh, the first assistant, Jess, uh, was an 11 minute phone, phone interview when I was still in Oregon, I was getting ready to go to Israel. She was somewhere else in the country and it was like, you know what, I, this makes sense. I think this, let's do this. And now it's been, it's just been a really, really good relationship and she's doing a great job with our offense. And then coach Reeves was, uh, came to us from Ole Miss, um, middle of the way through last year. And she is extremely bright and just, um, yeah, knows a lot about the game. It's fun to watch her run. She runs our defense, and they, everybody's strengths just really complement each other. So the success will primarily go to them when, when we're dropping bombs and have this great fielding percentage because they do their thing. Well, but you're still handling the pitchers, right? I handle the pitchers, yeah, and I'll take credit when we've got all the stolen bases. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why not? I mean, I mean, you got to play obviously with a lot of great base dealers while you were at Marshall. So, yeah, it's so funny because I never ran bases at Marshall. And so it wasn't like I was really listening closely to coach Dan. It was the mentality that I took away where it was like super high risk. And she was just going to find any little area that you could exploit somebody. And now I've really run with that. And it's just so much fun. It's liberating for the kids that, um, we're going to take risks and if it doesn't work out, we'll figure out why it didn't work out. But I'd rather, I'd rather go out in a game losing because we were aggressive and confident than lose because we were cautious and tentative and scared to make a mistake. Um, I just don't think that's a way to live life. And so we're not going to play softball like that. And we trust our strengths. Hey, it's all about that next 60 feet. I, I always loved that about coach Stanton style. I just, I loved running, loved seeing the speed. So 
Um, yeah, you loved running. You were faster than us. <laughs> <laughs> you could come out to practice without even stretching and just uh, smoke us on the softball field. That was funny. I, well, I don't, I don't know if I can do that anymore. Um, okay. Well, I, I definitely have to stretch now. That's for sure. <laughs> it, you know, that happens when you get a little older, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's let's go ahead and go back again to your time at Marshall. Some memories. What were some of your best memories? from your playing days, either on or off the field? Mm, oh my gosh. Um, it's like, it's not super uh, specific, but the fall practices at Marshall, it was when our field was still right in the middle of campus. And then you had the track next to us and the, mar uh, the um, drum line would, they would be practicing for the football games. And we'd be practicing, it was hot and humid, and Coach Stanton was just running the crap out of us, so we're all dying on the field. But there was just a sense of pride listening to um, the, the drum line doing their thing, and you just felt like you were always being watched because you were right next to the Twin Towers, and it just, it was, it was a really cool environment in the fall, specifically is what I, I remember really um, vividly, that uh, feeling of pride and how tough we were going to be as a team because she was paying so close attention to the details and making sure that we didn't quit or cut corners um, and that we had really solid uh, work ethic and character on the field. I always did like the location of the old field there because, I mean, especially on nice days, you know, people come out, they, you know, they might stay for an inning. And then if they stay for that inning, it might keep them there for the rest of the game, you know, something like that. I mean, it, it, it was just always nice to see so many people, you know, kind of coming and going around the field and watching for a little bit. I, when, when, they, when they went to make the new field, I always wish that they could have just renovated it right there in the middle of camp. Yeah. I mean, what they have now is fantastic. And the crowd comes out, at, you know, it, it's still amazing crowds. But somehow just being right there in the middle of campus was something special. Oh, my gosh. And you get – you get all the kids in their dorms and they'd be annoyed in the morning listening to us because we were always running our mouths on the field and they'd be like, it's Saturday, shut up. <laughs> but it was like, well, you have to notice us. There's, you can't walk away from Marshall not knowing if there's a softball program here because <laughs> they were hearing and watching all these practices. It was fun. Well, and obviously too, if you guys stop talking, you ended up having to run more. Yeah. So you weren't about to shut up. <laughs> no, I remember getting tested in um, one of my ex-phys classes for lung capacity. And I smoked everyone in the class. Like my lung capacity, the VO2 max was through the roof. And people are like, what? Oh, it's because we talk in cell phone. You're not allowed to stop talking. <laughs> That's my lung capacity. So thank you, Coach Stanton. <laughs> well, I mean, when you're out there doing your sprints, you got to be cheering on your teammates. You can't... Mm -hmm and puffing and all that no you, you gotta be you gotta still be able to keep talking so she, I, she yeah. does push that through but um was there a game or a day that you look back on and just kind of go oh my god that was awful you know whether whether it was the game itself or even just the weather conditions where you just said i want this to be over with right now oh my gosh um i i think it was at bowling green and it was snowing sleeting they had outhouses and it was, we were all frozen and I'm pretty sure coach Stanton came in and turned off the heaters in the dugouts. I'm not surprised. <laughs> didn't want us to be weak pansies and, but it was like snowing. It was so cold. I think I had like three pairs of sleeves on and it's so hard to pitch like that. It, it was like Virginia tech too. That's probably one of my most clear memories. I'm pretty sure I had a, a perfect game going into the end of the game, and it was in that sleet snow, so cold. And I got to the last batter on an 0-2 pitch and got super cocky and shook off whatever it was it was called. I wanted to go for the kill on an 0-2 pitch, and I threw a changeup, and it got blasted for a triple to give up the perfect game. But it's yeah, yeah. sure you just remember your failures, I think. I don't remember the successes, which is kind of – uh, negative, I guess, but I just remember all those bad days. Well, well, you got me laughing a little bit there when you said Bowling Green because you're the you're the third person to mention that the weather at Bowling Green is just, it's just I I Chris really? said it, Natasha said it I I just I, that that makes me laugh I I hope we don't turn into the Bowling Green bashing here but 
Oh. Um, well, that's interesting. I'd like to know how they recruit if that's like the perception from everyone else. <laughs> I'm like, huh, I wonder what they highlight when they're recruiting. Oh my gosh. Um, well, do you have any just crazy, obviously appropriate stories about your teammates? Appropriate keyword. Yeah. Oh man. Um, you, you had some interesting teammates. So many. I mean, getting to play with Folden was pretty special. That's, she's a whole, uh, she's on a whole nother level. So that's a fun one. Guzzo, I, I got to come in with Guzzo and she was such a fun catcher to be able to work with. Um, Noel was a really fun personality that like helped me to come out of my shell and just be myself and be my own weirdness in college. Randy, I learned so much from. I really feel like that's the that's the big takeaway. And that, what I try and teach my girls is you're not going to remember every win or loss. You're not going to remember every hit. You're going to remember the people and you're going to remember how people made you feel and the character that you built and the relationships. And the end goal is that these are your people 20 years down the road. And I think that's exactly what I got from Marshall is um, those are my people. It, I could call any one of my teammates and feel like they'll pick up the phone at 3 a.m. And I would be honored if they called me and said, I need you. Um, so I don't know if that sounds cheesy, but that really is, that's the most important thing I took away from Marshall and coach Stan, like she's big time now. She's at Indiana. And I know if I call her right now, I say, hi, I need you. She'd figure out a way to get back on the phone with me or answer or whatever today. And I mean, it's, it's all about people. And she, she raised an environment where that was a priority and we treated each other well and we learned integrity and yeah, the integrity, man. Learned a lot of that in college with our quizzes. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, so, I mean, along with that, you know, finally, is there is there anything else you'd want to share with whoever may watch this video? Hmm. Oh, man. Just to, you know, we talk about it all the time, but being grateful for the experience and the opportunity and knowing that it goes by so fast. It's such a grind in college, right? Like every day and those early morning wake ups and the weights and getting pushed to your limit where you think that this is my breaking point, but then you keep fighting through it. I mean, it's an honor to get to be part of that, really. And that uh, shapes character and, and builds you up and you, you become tougher than you thought you could have been by being a college athlete, specifically in a program like Marshall. And um, so I just encourage people to be grateful for the opportunities that they get and whatever their role is and, and take it all in, I guess. All right. Well, um, Abby, Coach Farler, thank you very much for joining me uh, today here on the MUSB Dugout. I really appreciate it. This was great. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, Abigail Harder, 52 wins over 600 innings pitched for the Thundering Herd. And now, head coach, Abigail Farler of the Abilene Christian University Wildcats. Again, Abby, thank you.